Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we wish you all a blessed new year. We certainly would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today is part of one of our year in review for 2022. <clears throat> Do you believe it? It just like flew by. So we're going to be sharing about equipping a pro-life generation, the final act of mercy, burying the dead, and the privilege that God allows us to have yes. to sit here at this beautiful table and to interview people, to have people come literally from all over the world who come yeah. and share their apostolate with us and tell us the beautiful things that God is doing in their ministry and making yeah. difference, yeah. making a beautiful difference, uh, especially in this culture of death that is still out there. People who are defending life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what the Supreme Court is doing, no matter what the state rulings are doing. We certainly have had great pro-life people come through, and that's one of the uh, highlights that we want to share about. Yeah, some, about 140, 145 shows for the year. And so this is always a highlight for us to think back on them and the great contributions. And then just all the shows on EWTN and right, all the yeah. people. <laughs> and so for us, we're just filled with the privilege mm -hmm. of getting to sit at a table that we haven't set, the table of EWTN. And uh, building a culture of life and marriage and family and of truth so much goes on. What a great work this is. So we're looking forward uh, to sharing with you more about the various people that we're going to have with us. Uh, it's going to be equipping a pro-life generation, generation to generation. We've got to equip mm -hmm. a new generation, equip our young people on the gospel of life and marriage and the family, uh, whether they're teenagers or e even younger than that or older folks. Um, that we have to know what we believe and to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. So you're really going to enjoy these clips. We'll be right back to share a little bit more about them, to set them up for you. And hopefully these are, are clips of the shows that you're going to be able to watch whenever you'd like to watch them because they're just chock full of great information. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Again, a blessed new year, and we continue our Christmas season. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And this is the time where we go over the best of our shows. All that happened in 2022. And some of the shows that we pulled out of that season to bring back to you to say, these were highlights. These were things that are going to help you and equip you to be a better Catholic in the year 2023. Don't miss this. Catch this. Know this and be a student of it and be a better Catholic. So first up will be Sean Carney, and he's sharing from uh, his book, What to Say When, and this first aired uh, in January, right after March for Life. And then secondly, we have Janet Moran, a no stranger to EWTN, that's for sure, and that first aired in June. And Janet really focuses upon equipping teenagers, understanding the gospel of life, and how to articulate that, and the dangers if you don't live the gospel of life in your own life. And this is just so very, very important. So let's take a look at these two shows. Let's learn all that we can learn and give thanks mm. that a new generation is being raised up for life. Let's take a look. I think that can be frustrating for a lot of people. They, they almost feel like a, a post-March for Life low. You know, they're mm -hmm. kind of like, well, you know, now I can just go back to my hometown and you hear a Planned Parenthood ad on the radio or you see a, an abortion facility in your town, you think you feel like you're helpless. And that's why we have things like 40 Days for Life. That was one of the motivations mm. for starting 40 Days for Life. That's why we have 
the wonderful pre pregnancy resource centers that we that we work with so closely at the local level because you know the march for life doesn't really impact your local <laughs> abortion facilities you know their director uh that much you know but it but if you go out and you peacefully pray uh, every single day you're going to impact your local clinic mm -hmm. you're going to impact their yeah. bottom line you're going to save a lot of babies yeah. and so um, you know, it, keeping it local is very important and coming together in the masses mm -hmm. in our nation's capital mm -hmm. in San Francisco is also very important, no matter where you are, whether it's a city march or a state march, because it says that America is 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 not just sleeping at night, knowing mm -hmm. that abortions go on in our country. We're still marching <laughs> like you. I've, I've devoured every pro-life book. I, I love all of them. And, uh, and especially pro-life apologetics books. And I just realized um, a lot of them are dated. And I also thought, you know, there's so many new bizarre things that mm -hmm. have come up that we don't think about, yeah. you know, forced birth, which is a new thing now. Mm -hmm. All of these insane arguments, gone are the days where, you know, Bill Clinton got up and said he wanted abortion to be safe, legal, and rare. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have shout your abortion, infanticide, um, you know, all of these radical things within the abortion industry. And that's your and first so, chapter, right? The landscape has changed. Is that what you're pulling up? The about? landscape, the has, landscape changed. has changed. And, and our movement really needed not just a resource, not the world, according to Sean Carney or Steve Carlin, um, but but an approach that has been proven and that works. You know, mm -hmm. we've used these these techniques and, and these talking points um, at abortion facilities around the world. We've used them with Planned Parenthood workers. We use them with women considering abortion. We've used them with feminists. We've used them with, with men, you know, who are advocating for abortion. They're proven arguments. Only book I've ever written um, where it's proven. I, I know that it works, not mm -hmm. just when I right. use it, but other people... And, uh, and that's why that first chapter is um, the landscape has changed. And then, you know, we need to go on offense. We need to yes. go on offense. Um, abortion is an absolute abomination. It attacks science. It attacks reason. It attacks God. And it, it, it has to be justified constantly by those who do it, by those who participate in it. And so uh, life doesn't have to be justified. Birthday cakes and <laughs> t-ball games and first communions you don't have to justify those things. You have to justify abortion. And so, um, you know, it is written to convert hearts and minds. Yes. One thing we know in our movement the last 50 years, people convert. Mm -hmm. People change their minds on abortion all the time. Abortion workers, mm -hmm. they change their minds. Women who had an abortion change their mind. Doctors change their minds. And so this, this you know, it's not a you're now a know-it-all and you're like the annoying guy in the break room um, kind of book. Um, you'll know your stuff for sure, but it's written in a way that, that has a zeal for souls at its center. Well, it actually began because uh, the publisher of my very first book, Recall Abortion, came to me and said, you know, there's a big gap. No one has spoken to teens on this issue. Could you kind of take what you did with Recall and go a little bit deeper, but make it tailored for them? And when you think about it, Jim and Joy, come on. Planned Parenthood, they're in the public school curriculums, mm -hmm. shamefully. They're on college campuses. I mean, they will take your, your, your college daughter off for an abortion without the parents even knowing. Uh, they're, and now with the medical abortion, they're just like dispensing it all over the campuses. So we have to equip our young people with the information that they need. And some people say to me, well, my daughter would never have an abortion. Well, first of all, you'd never know that. Mm -hmm. But if they're equipped with the information, maybe they could save a roommate's friend, one of their friends from having an abortion because... Mm -hmm. It's sad. I know stories of college campuses and kids on a dorm floor chip in for another kid's abortion, mm -hmm. thinking they're helping them. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of that book is really to equip them with all the facts. But I take them back in history first to show them, because especially now with this whole Roe v. Wade discussion, I tell them, people, abortion's been around for forever. In fact, I, when research, I found the very first mention of abortion was all the way back in 1500 B.C. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. where a woman tried to terminate her pregnancy. And so even in the colonial days, you know, we had some colonies who, who said abortion was okay up to, you know, up to quickening, and others banned it altogether. So it's been like this back and forth. Uh, what we have to do is change the hearts and minds mm -hmm. yeah. so that nobody would ever consider an abortion. And that's what I do in the book. I take every circumstance and show them 
this is what it's about. Yeah. This is what it does to that unborn baby. But this is what it does to the mom, mm -hmm. to the dad, to the grandparents, the whole family unit. Mm -hmm. And I show them that abortion, always bad for the baby, but always bad for all these others, too. It, it says for teens, but I think it said should mm -hmm. say, and adults, too, because yeah. I think they'll all learn something. And one of the things that gets me the most excited is the part in the very in the middle here, they allowed mm -hmm. me to put in uh, right. pictures of the unborn baby and the baby's talking to them. So it's start, starting here, it's seven weeks. Because mm -hmm. when you think about chemical abortion, that's the baby they're attacking. Right. And they're, they're making people believe, oh, it's still just a clump of cells. Well, it's not. This baby's heart's been beating. And look at how well formed it is. Yeah. So I take the kids through mm -hmm. a little bit of feeble development. It's about 16 pages here. I mean, you just fall in love with this baby. Mm -hmm. it, it's real. Right. And so then in the book, I tell them what happens to that baby in the abortion. And in the first trimester, second, and even late-term abortion, because it does happen in our country through mm -hmm. all nine months. Mm -hmm. you know. And I show them also all the hard cases, rape, incest, life of the mother, even feel anomaly. And I show them it's never necessary to offer a woman an abortion. Mm -hmm. you know. So um, hopefully it will give them the tools they yeah. need mm -hmm. to yeah. go out into the culture and be pro-life. You right. know? But also, too, I dealt with chastity which is very important as you, I mean, did yeah. enjoy that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what you guys promote mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. with marriage and family. And with our young people, what I do is I give them some science up front. Look at all the STDs and all the damage that premarital sex with all, right. like, you know, friends with benefits and all this stuff. Look what this does to you physically. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, we know. Morally, we know. But also physically. Yeah. And I, for these young girls, I, I show them how, do you realize for damage that could be done for you through these STDs and mm -hmm. other things, mm -hmm. when you want to get pregnant years later, you may not be able to right. because of damage. Right. And so it's trying to show them, you know, they say, just listen to the science. I, I serve up the science, right. but then I serve up chastity yes. and what authentic chastity is. And I have testimonies in there from young people mm -hmm. who waited till marriage. Right. And, and they talked about the beauty it was. And so, you know, it's not just about abortion in yeah. the book. It's showing them the right path. Well, we certainly enjoyed having Sean Carney on the show about his book, What to Say When, equipping you. And we bought that book for all of our staff and <laughs> volunteers at our center. And you could go to EWTNRC.com if you didn't get that book. What to Say When, because it ha empowers you with answers. Because sometimes maybe in this culture of death, you're hearing questions and you don't have the answers. That's a great book to equip you to do what you need to do. And then Janet Marana, beautiful, about teaching teens, about passing the torch on. Because it's if this generation dies, and we will die, <laughs> when we die, who's going to take this up? So it is empowering to pass it on to say, now it's your turn. You run this thing until abortion in our country is unthinkable. Tremendous shows, and there's plenty more to come. We'll be dealing with the final act of mercy to bury the dead. Don't go away. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Are continuing with our year in review of 2022, some of our favorite shows. And Jim, I know that you want to introduce the rest of our shows. Well, again, the final act of mercy, burying the dead, and the importance of this. Um, Daniel Rose first aired in October as part of Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Danielle uh, lost two children through miscarriage, um, and she has a, a beautiful. Uh, DVD, uh, Beauty Unnoticed, Beauty Unnoticed, how we need to recognize, give thanks, name our children, how the church needs to rally around people at time of miscarriage. Danny Abramowitz and Don Sampy, they're the second show, first aired in February, um, and it's speaking all about babies. And so these guys that he's got together in his discipleship group, they make caskets, 
They have places to bury the babies. If you need a service, they arrange that. And again, it's the whole uh, reality of this corporal act of mercy mm. and, and, and the final blessing on the sacredness of human life when children uh, pass away. So take a look at these clips and we'll be right back. I was raised in a wonderful home with a mom and dad that uh, helped me know the love of God the Father and bless the mother. I started writing music when I was a teenager and my parents allowed me to go to India and spend time with Mother Teresa's sisters. And that inspired me to offer the gift of music back to God as a means of alleviating spiritual poverty. So mm -hmm. St. Teresa of Calcutta is my hero. Um, I spent a, uh, several years in discernment with a Franciscan convent in Texas praying to know God's will for my vocation and I and the Lord showed me that he was not calling me to make vows there he wanted me to become a wife and a mother and I was blessed to become a sacrament with my husband Mitchell mm -hmm. nine years ago we've been blessed with six children four on earth and two with God wow. and we're homeschooling the children and praying every day for wisdom and grace <laughs> to to yeah. give ourselves to God and to serve our family so wow. yeah it's a blessing so the, the album Beauty Unnoticed is the first, it's a, my sixth album. It's the first one I've recorded in about 10 years. The last one was before I met my husband Mitchell and I was on the road full time as a music missionary. And now it's been God's will for me to be at home serving my family and, and being tucked hidden there, um, homeschooling and not being on the road. And so this album was born directly out of the process of working through the grief when we lost our daughter, Mary Serafina. She was still born from a court accident. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, the, the waves of grief would come. It was so difficult. I didn't even know how to pray that I would go down in the quiet after the children went to sleep at night and I would go to my little office and I would just cry out to God. And so each of the songs on this album were written in the process of hitting those waves of grief. Yeah. And I would go and cry out to God and then he would, uh, he would help these songs come out to help heal my heart as they were being written. And then when we started recording the songs, we recorded the whole album from the house during Joseph's nap hour. There were moms <laughs> that would come over and help babysit while mm. the, the girls upstairs while Joseph was napping. And in little tiny baby steps, we recorded this album and actually when the album was getting recorded, then I miscarried our, 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 mm -hmm. our son Frederick Albert about six months later. So the process kind of, the, the songs literally were the healing process for my heart, both in grieving her loss and then and also with Frederick Albert that it was, God was helping heal my heart in the process mm -hmm. of creating this album. So I don't know what I would have done without that process because it was, it was very difficult to walk through it, but yeah. God brought so much beauty yeah. forth yeah. from yeah. that process of losing yeah. these babies. It, I really felt like Mary Serafina, like the seraphim and cherubim angels are the ones at the throne of God, praising, worshiping God in song. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like she sent those songs from God's heart to heal my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They came out of me in a way that none of the other music I've ever written has come out. Like it just would pour out like mm -hmm. in just this brief kind of period of time and the evening after the kids went to bed and these songs would just pour out in a way that it was so clear that it wasn't me that was doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when I hear it, when I hear the songs, it helps me to really concretely remember that their lives are so beautiful mm -hmm. and that even in their deaths that there's been a greater beauty brought into my life into our family's life and mm -hmm. into the world because they are with him mm -hmm. and they are praying for us mm -hmm. and loving us yes and they're very much a part of our family we speak about them every day in mm -hmm. our home the children think of heaven every day mm -hmm. because their brother and sister they know are with god mm -hmm. they brought us all closer to jesus Yes, I have a handicapped boy, and we have a, this lady that takes care of him. Uh, her son and uh, daughter-in-law had a baby full term, and it was dead when mm -hmm. it came out. Mm -hmm. And she was beside herself and didn't know what to do because they didn't have the funds to get it out of the hospital mm -hmm. and things like that. <laughs> and she asked, would you make the casket? I had no idea what the, how to spell casket or woodworking. <laughs> mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. Good Lord said yes through me, mm -hmm. and uh, we started making caskets then. And uh, today we're over. We've done over 300 so far, just this month. Mm -hmm. We've had one a day. And these are miscarried babies, or stillborn babies, or all of the above? All of them. Mm. We even get them from the coroner for babies that were mm -hmm. murdered and things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, mm -hmm. just 
So yeah. it's 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 all God's babies, not mm -hmm. just indigent right. people. Right. Okay. Think yeah. so, yeah. and it's open uh, from birth all the way to two year old. Mm -hmm. So not only are you providing caskets, but there's these beautiful <clears throat> garments, right? So you, who who is making these? Well, it happens to be the lady that lost her granddaughter. Mm. Can you believe that? She's yes, still, I can. Uh, that's Maria, and. Uh, She's still making the linings for the casket mm -hmm. and making the gowns for the babies. So you see what God does oh. out of our own suffering. He brings yeah. something beautiful out of it. And now these, these garments, these beautiful for a little girl, a little boy, this is donated. These are wedding dresses. Yes, donated right? wedding dresses. All right, that are hanging in people's closets that their grandchildren aren't going to wear, that they think right. they might wear, <laughs> That's the and they need to come. And what a beautiful purpose to yes. be repurposed And we get these for. from all over the country, huh? Yeah. Right. Okay. Sent yeah. to us. So they mail them to you? Yes. Thank wow. you, Grandma's Angels in Pennsylvania. Okay. They sent us a box <laughs> of, of gowns mm -hmm. like that out of the blue. We had no idea. Wow. So it... It's spreading, but mm -hmm. it's about word of mouth. Yes. And, uh, so these are what these deceased little ones are vested in. They would be wearing yes, these. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you can pause. And we do that, all that, that, we do all so this powerful, free. Right? Mm -hmm. This is free too, free mm -hmm. of charge. Right. Yeah, there's no charge for any of this. Okay. So where where all that gets complicated <laughs> usually is where are we then burying these babies, right? Now, you, we can make a casket, we can have all the clothes, but then where do we inter the baby? Where, where is that happening? What do you all provide for that? Well, through the working of the Holy Spirit, he put into us at one point, a couple of years after we started doing it, that uh, we need to build a tomb for the babies. Mm -hmm. And we did. We started in July, and we had zero money, mm -hmm. but we started anyway, and it was dedicated in January mm -hmm. to the Archbishop, and we gave it to the Arch, uh, Archdiocese because we're a prayer group. We don't, we're not a landowner, right? So we gave it to the Archdiocese. And they, see, okay. they have the cemetery. Okay. So we, we right. worked out, and we so gave, they gave it to you the them. land. We yes. gave us mm -hmm. the land. We gave them the tomb. We give mm -hmm. them the caskets, mm -hmm. and okay. we'll leave, tell them we'll, we even have the funeral. I mean. Uh, for, uh, Ceremony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kenny and, thir and 12 or 13 of the guys come for the services and play music. Mm -hmm. And then we have deacons in a group that provide the services as mm -hmm. well. And we have some priests that came out of this group that do some of the services as well. And then sometimes that the families will provide their own. It's yeah. what, it's, right. It's, it's, it's whatever the need is. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so appreciative of Daniel Rose and her offering that she gave to us out of her great suffering in her beautiful music and what a way that is to help us heal and so you can contact her ministry to hopefully get her cd if that was helpful to you and then the great work of mercy that danny abramowitz and his great group are doing yeah. i mean when when we lose babies, when we have stillborn babies or we have miscarried mm. babies, and maybe the church, maybe your church community is ill-equipped what to do. There is a group that is ready to come up alongside of you and help you on this journey so you're not alone. And we're so grateful for that beautiful, beautiful work of mercy that they're offering Amen. to mothers and fathers out there who are hurting. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Equipping a pro-life ge generation and the final act of mercy. That's for all of us to mm. do. And so it's been wonderful to be with you as be we begin a new year. And may the best be yet to come. May God's blessings be on you and all of your loved ones as you enter into this new year being a people of life and marriage and family. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Bye now.